Hello and welcome back. Today it's finally time to take a look at the Carmen Free S632A1 vacuum tube radio. The radio whose tubes have been tearing apart these few weeks and for whom the schematic I've been always showing. So if you're curious to see what's inside this thing, how it's built and what are the various quirks going on in vacuum tube radios, then keep watching. So the first thing to look at is the radio itself, so the outer box. We can see that this is a nice wooden box. We got our speaker right here in front, so behind this textile mesh. Then we got our various keys with which we select the frequency range we wish to look at. So we got our long waves, medium waves and short waves switch. So you simply need to press any of these and that turns on the radio in that specific range. Now other things you got your magic eye tube right here and then you have your volume knob and your tuning knob. And you can see that we have this nice marking here showing us that this was made by the Electronica factory Bucharest and also we have this fine scale for tuning the radio. Let's just look at it for a moment. So what we can see that we have our various wavelengths. So for the long wave we have a wavelength spanning from 2000 meters up down to 1050. We've got our medium waves and short waves. And then for the medium waves at least, we have the various stations that we can expect to tune into. So whenever we are listening to this radio, we can expect to find the certain stations in these areas. Now normally when you turn this radio on, you should have a light behind this and then a tuning indicator. So when you're turning this tuning knob, this indicator will move behind the scale showing you at which frequency and wavelength you are at the specific moment. Now since this radio was made in Eastern Europe, most of the stations you have here are stations that you might end up listening to when you're in Eastern Europe. So you don't have anything from let's say England or France or America, you only have stations that you might be able to listen to around in Eastern Europe. So from Romania, Hungary, Yugoslavia and other such countries. Okay, let's move to the back see what's behind this thing. So this is what the radio looks like from the back. Now there used to be a cover behind here but that's gone missing. So this radio is quite an old radio, it has been taken apart many times, repaired many times so some things might be not quite original but the radio still works. So let's look at the major components. So starting from the right side we can see our input transformer and the rectifier vacuum tube. We got our audio output tube, so the ECL82, two intermediate frequency transformers, our intermediate frequency amplifier, the EBF89 vacuum tube, our local oscillator and mixer tube, the ECH81. Then if we go to the back a bit, we will see in there the variable capacitor. So this right here is our variable capacitor. And then we got our input filtering capacitor. So the main electrolytic capacitor and the very burnt resistor. Now this capacitor is not the original capacitor. The first one probably broke over time, but it was replaced with this one and it still works. And now if we look a bit deeper inside, we will see our magic eye vacuum tube. So it's just clipped here onto the front plate. And then we have our speaker. So this thing here, we only see its magnet and then our output audio transformer, so this thing right here. And basically these are the main components. Now before removing the frame, I would just like to show you that in case you actually needed to do some repairs on this thing, you could access the component tree from below. So you have this hatch on the bottom side and here you can see the various components inside the radio. And now you can notice one of the particularities of this thing. There's no PCB in here. So all of these components were hand assembled. So you have these really big components, so compared to modern day components, these are huge. And the wires from there were just intertwined into these sockets and then soldered. So basically this is where all of the main connections of this radio are made. So now I got it out and the first thing you can see is that there's no connectors. So all the wiring that goes around it like these going to the speaker are directly connected. 
Also, I had to take off the magic eye tube. It was just clipped on because again, this thing, the wiring just goes into the frame. So let's have a better look now at our radio. Now, the first thing you may notice right in the middle of the radio is this thing. This is the keyboard and the various coils for the oscillators for the various frequencies. Now, this thing looks extremely dirty as you can see and this is probably because somebody thought it was a good idea to put some vd40 or something like that over the contacts to prevent them from rusting up so all this dust just stick to everything and it can't really come off so we got our coils for the free frequency interval so for long waves medium waves and short waves we got some capacitors and then we see one of the interesting particularities of this radio and what i'm referring to are these things so this might look like piece of wire but actually it's two pieces of wire so that makes it really special now basically this is a variable capacitor so a trimmer basically one of the wires is wound around the other one and because of the surface area between the two you have a certain capacitance and this is used to fine-tune the oscillator frequency now right next to it we see our variable capacitor so we see this is a capacitor with air so our dielectric is air in this case if we move a bit to the front of the radio, we will see where one of the light bulbs illuminating the scales used to sit. This thing got broken and, well, it's quite hard to find a replacement for it nowadays. And if we look in between the glass and the metal structure, we will see these pulleys and things on which a string used to sit that used to carry our tuning indicator when this thing was fully operational. And now on the right side, we can see our volume potentiometer. Again, a huge component by modern day standards. And we have reached our input transformer. We can see that they place the vacuum tube directly onto it. So you don't have the rectifying diode on the frame, but rather directly on our input transformer. And since this is so high up and the box is so small, one of the problems that could appear with this radio is that you can have your wooden box. So something that's quite flammable, very close to something that's really hot, a vacuum tube. And you can get problems with this so your box could break and burn so what they did to fix this is added this metal plate I'm not sure not sure how well you can see it and this is basically a heat shield to prevent the box from overheating now you can see that this transformer is quite small so usually in vacuum tube radios you have some really big and bulky transformers now this is about half the size of a regular transformer and that is because of the way it is built so this is not a regular isolating transformer, but rather it's an auto transformer, meaning that the input winding and the output and everything is on the same winding. This makes it much smaller and much cheaper to make. And now on the side of the transformer, we can see this structure built here. So basically we got our fuses and we got this knob thing. And this has three voltages written on it. So we have 110 volts, 120 and 220. Basically, the idea is that depending on the country in which you're in and the region in which you're in, you might have different AC main supply voltages. For example, even nowadays in America, you still use 110 or 120 volts. I'm not sure. Whereas in Europe, you have 220 volts. And the same thing used to happen back in the 60s when this thing was built. So depending on the voltage you had, you would select one of these. So you would unturn, unscrew this screw, turn this, it's a contact plate on the back side, and then put it in the right position. Now, another thing to look at are these, the intermediate frequency transformers. Now, these don't look like a transformer. This thing looks like a transformer, but these, not so much. So let's see what's inside these things. So on the outside, you can see that we have this aluminum casing, and then we have two coils. So let's just take off the aluminum casing to see what's behind it. So you simply need to remove this pin, holding everything together, so it comes right off, and then you can, well it doesn't really want to, but normally you would be able to remove this aluminum cap. So the problem was that these coils were screwed in a way that they came a bit out of the aluminum casing, so I had to turn them a bit so that now the aluminum case can freely slide off. And basically, this is what is inside the intermediate frequency transformer. You got some spider webs, so right here on top, very important component, couple capacitors, and then these two coils. And the actual coil can be seen on the back side. So basically what you do is you tune these two coils, so oscillating circuits because you have the capacitors also, to the intermediate frequency, and you use this to filter only that frequency to go through the radio. 
and hopefully when I put this all together it will still work since these have been fine-tuned in the factory and now I messed with it. And that's about it for this radio. Let's try and turn it on and see exactly how it works. So I reassembled the intermediate frequency transformer and let's plug this thing in, see if it can still make some noise. So we can start to see that our filaments are already starting to glow. So these three tubes are already up and running. We also see that our double diode tube is running and also our magic eye tube. So let's try and tune in a station, see if we can find anything. So we can already hear that there's a radio station on. I will just turn it down so we can listen to each other. Basically this radio, even without a proper antenna, so there's no antenna connected to it, there's no ferrite rod inside it, is sensitive enough to capture a few radio stations as is. Now normally this would need a proper 20-30 meter antenna to work, but you can still get some stations even like this. So now let's have a closer look at the vacuum tube. So here we see our ECL vacuum tube running nicely in the background. We see our EBF tube and the cable going to our magic eye. We see our ECH vacuum tube, so the local oscillator, and there sitting on its side is our EM tube, our magic eye tube. So here we can see that it looks like it's going crazy, but basically, since the radio is not properly tuned in, we can see that our signal is varying, and this is exactly what our tube is showing us. So it's showing us how the signal is getting stronger and weaker based on the volume of the speech. Now one thing to mention about this radio is that since it has an auto transformer, the frame and everything is directly connected to the main supply. So if you end up playing with such a radio, please be very careful since you can get electrocuted very easily and very badly since there's a lot of exposed metal. And that's about it for today. Hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my latest videos and see you next time. Bye bye.